In this lesson, we will examine one of the first strategies you should consider when tackling counting questions. We will introduce this strategy by way of example. In this particular question, we want to determine how many three-digit numbers can be created using only twos and sevens. Now, if we cannot readily identify a fast way to solve this question, we should consider listing all of the possible outcomes and then counting those outcomes. This approach has two primary benefits. The first is that it may indeed be the fastest strategy, especially if we cannot see any other approaches. The second benefit is that the process of listing possible outcomes may help us gain some insight into a faster way to solve the question. Now let's say that we begin listing outcomes and in the process we fail to gain any insight into a faster way to solve the question. At this point, should we continue listing possible outcomes? Well, to answer this question, we must first examine the answer choices. If, for example, our answer choices to this question range from 8 to 36, then we know that we must list at most 36 possible outcomes, in which case it may be reasonable to continue listing. However, if our answer choices range from 150 to 500, it may be impractical to continue listing, at which point we would make our best guess and move on. Okay, now let's solve this question using two different listing techniques. Here we need to list three digit numbers that consist of twos and sevens only. A systematic approach to listing possible outcomes is to list the numbers in ascending order. So using only twos and sevens, the smallest number we can create is 222. The next number is 227, then 272, and so on all the way to 777. So we can see here that there are eight possible numbers that satisfy the conditions in the question. Another systematic approach to solving this question is to use something called a counting tree. In this example, we will create our possible outcomes in stages. Here the stages will involve selecting the first digit, the second digit, and the third digit. Now for the first digit, we can have either a 2 or a 7. If the first digit is a 2, then the second digit can be either a 2 or a 7. Similarly, if the first digit is a 7, the second digit can be either a 2 or a 7. Now if the first digit is a 2 and the second digit is a 2, then the third digit can be either a 2 or a 7. And so it goes until we have the following tree. Now how is this tree related to the solution to the question? Well notice that each path in this tree represents one of the possible outcomes. For example, this path represents the number 222. And this path represents the number 727. So now our question becomes, how many different paths exist in this tree? Well, as you can see, the total number of paths here is the same as the total number of endpoints in the tree. There are eight endpoints, which means there are eight different paths, which means there are eight possible outcomes to our question. Now, in future lessons, we will examine counting techniques that will allow us to solve this same question without listing. Now, although we will learn several counting techniques in this module, you should always consider listing and counting as one of your strategies whenever you encounter a counting question.